Well, of course, Steve, I have an appointment. Well, look, this won't take too long. I just want to tell you that I'm pretty upset with your brother. Tom? Why? What about? Well, what he does? This whole business with Tommy. Now, I've talked to Tom and made it clear to him about his feelings for Audrey. But I really do think someone should call him on the way he's letting that boy ride roughshod over his mother. Well, I, uh, I just don't think he'd be very receptive to any criticism from you or, or me at the moment. Well, somebody needs to talk to him. Steve, I, I just think it might be better to leave the situation alone for a few more days. He, I, I know the emotional state Tom's in right now. And, well, I think you'd be better off if you didn't pursue it with him. Just give him a little time to calm down here. Huh? Well, Leo, I don't see how it can go on this way, and I don't think it should. Look, Steve, I, uh, I really can't see. I've got a, a client waiting for me. Uh, let's talk about it again when I have a little more time, huh? All right, Leo, go ahead, Sorry, I detained you. It's all right. Just, I'm in a terrible rush. I'll get back to you. Oh, Tom, Steve Hardy. Now, when you're free, I'd like us to get together. No, no, it's not about a patient. It's personal. It's about Tommy. Something's come up, and I had to see you both. I hate to ask this question, but the other day when I came to pick up Mike to take him back to the center, could you possibly have said anything to him while I was waiting in the car that might have influenced him to run away? Run away? What do you mean? Has he run away? He disappeared from school this morning at recess time. Nobody knows where he is. You're not suggesting we had anything to do with it? All I know is that Mrs. Taylor came to my office this morning very upset. In fact, my supervisor overheard her talking to me, and shortly after that, Mike vanished. Well, I certainly didn't have anything to do with it. No, no, wait a minute. Now, what kind of suggestion is that? You think Diana was waiting outside with the motor running and her disguise in the back seat? Uh, Dr. Taylor, now, don't be angry. I had to ask. We're all very worried about him, and, and Mr. Craig insisted that I come and see you about it. All right, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I have been on your side in this matter from the beginning, both of you. I wanted you to have Mike, and I didn't want them to take him away from you, but, well, none of that really matters now. Please, if he should make his way back to you, don't try to keep him. It would only mean more pain for everyone. Lord knows the situation's bad enough as it is. Rick! It's a lucky thing Laura gave me a key while you were in the hospital. You probably wouldn't let me in. She seemed to prefer messengers. It would have been much kinder than this. You shouldn't have come here. I shouldn't have come? What am I, imposing? I said everything I have to say in the letter. I, I think it speaks for itself. No more than a ventriloquist dummy speaks for itself. I want to hear it straight from you, and I mean straight. Hey, this letter tells me nothing. Dear Rick, when you asked me to give you a wedding date tomorrow, suddenly a terrible realization hit me. I can't. I can't name a date because I can't marry you. You don't have to read it to me. I wrote it. But I want you to hear it with my inflections, if you don't mind. Maybe then you'll understand how it sounds. Now, it really doesn't explain anything. I'd give my life not to have to hurt you this way. But if I married you, I'd only hurt you more. Hurt me more than this? I'd like to know how. I'm desperately sorry, but I have no choice. Well, what is that supposed to mean, no choice? Like somebody is blackmailing you into doing this? Or couldn't you figure out a way to make it more cruel? It means exactly what it says. I didn't have any alternative way. Stop this. I'm not finished yet. So I'm returning your beautiful ring, which I have no right to keep. Sincerely, Leslie. This isn't just an engagement ring. It's a symbol of what I feel for you. Of love. Of loyalty. Of, of handing my life to you. You can't just put that on an envelope and mark it, no thanks, return to sender. Don't I have a right to change my mind? Yes, you have a right. 
But I have one also. To know what made you change your mind. Yesterday, we, we had everything going for us. I mean, the world was opening up to us. I'm on the threshold of the biggest promotion of my career. You seemed happy about that. We were going to set a date for our wedding. And then last night, you, you sat down and wrote this. <laughs> I don't believe it. I want to know what I'm dealing with here. Is this a whim? Was this whole thing just some kind of game? Oh, you know better than that. I don't know anything at this point. That's what I want you to tell me. Well, then give me a chance so that I can. Stop yelling and, and listen. Last night, I thought about us. You had finally pushed me into setting a date, and I realized that I couldn't delay it anymore, that I finally had to face my feelings and see them for what they were. What do you mean I pushed you into setting a date? Leslie, when two people love each other and they want to get married, they're supposed... Is that it? Have you decided you don't love me anymore? I don't think that I love you as I must in order to marry you. I think that I have been confusing gratitude with love, and I don't think that's fair to you. Gratitude? Gratitude for what? I took care of you when you were sick. I washed your dishes a couple of times. Is that the kind of thing you're talking about? I took out your garbage and brought in the paper, and it dazzled you so much you confused it with love? I'm talking about our whole history that led up to you proposing to me. Seeing me through the aftermath of Cam's death. Going with me to Canada to, to get Laura back. Your, your concern for her. Your, your tenderness to me. Being there when I needed you and, and giving me a shoulder to lean on. I've been so grateful for all those things and I always will be. But I can't say in my heart that it's love. What is love, Leslie? I mean, maybe I don't know. The women only love men who beat them. Will you tell me that? You're doing it again. You're pressuring me. Only to get an answer I'm entitled to. All right, so you've had a long night of soul searching. And you've decided what love isn't. Okay, well, I'm asking you to tell me what love is. All right, it, it's not tenderness. It's not gratitude. It's not two people sharing the grueling moments. It's, it's, it's not helping each other through the rough spots. It's not sharing laughter together. It, it's not enjoying each other's company. Well, then what is it? I can't put it into words. I only can say to you that I... I don't love you enough to justify marrying you. I can't give you what you need, what you deserve. I don't have it to give. It's not your fault. It's mine. I'm just not a good enough person. Oh, I'm sorry. That's... That's just too quick and easy. I can't accept that. Accept it as any kind of answer? It's the only answer I can give you. Well, it's not enough. I don't know how else to explain it, then. I don't want to marry you. I don't love you enough. Am I required to give you any better answer than that? You knew in the beginning that I was afraid to say yes. And now I just can't go through with it. You should have listened. You should have listened to those fears I had at first. They they just deepened. No. No, I, I can't accept that. For my money, you, you're just not completely yourself yet. It, it's a combination of, of a lot of shocks that you've had and, and the climax of losing the baby. Look, I can't accept this from you now. Because nothing that you're telling me rings true. It, it's all false and hollow to me. No. No, it isn't. Okay. If it isn't, then you'll tell me again, when you're more calm, and you'll tell me more honestly, and maybe then I'll believe you. But right now, I don't. Now, look, uh, I have a patient I have to get back to. We'll continue this conversation later, tonight. And maybe then we can get down to the, the bottom of this. But until then, you and I have a commitment. And that ring symbolizes that.
Barbara Walters, inviting you to join Harry Wiesner and me tonight on the ABC Evening News. Oh, Ted, you told me just the other day. Honey, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that, that's the way it goes sometimes. I mean, uh, things happen and we may not be pleased with it, but that's just the way it goes. Why? How do you for each other? He loves you so much. Don't you love him, Leslie? Is that it? You've decided after all this time that you just don't love him? It, it's very difficult not to love a man like Rick. I mean, he's, he's wonderful. I think he's about the most perfect person I know. But since I got back from the hospital, you see, I've had a lot of time to think about it. And I've realized that we're not perfect for each other. That marriage, for us, it just wouldn't work. Did this have something to do with me? Did Rick decide that he wasn't ready for the responsibility of a teenager? He broke it off and then you're just protecting him. No, oh no. That's not the way it was at all. Why, Rick loves you. You know that. Breaking it off didn't have anything to do with him. It was my idea. But why? I thought you wanted us to be a family. We were going to do things together. You, Rick, and me. We were going to have a real home, just like other people have. Honey, I know how much you wanted a father as well as a mother, but... You shouldn't get married to please somebody else in the family. I mean, you, you've got to think of yourself, and you've got to think of the man. Well, if Rick didn't want this, then you're not thinking of him. You're still afraid, aren't you, Leslie? You still can't trust men, not even someone as wonderful as Rick. I thought when you accepted that engagement ring, you're not even wearing it. No, sweetheart, I'm not. It's not fair. Just because you had a couple of bad experiences, you're determined to f*** all the rest of our lives. Rick was going to devote himself to making you happy. But instead, you decided to make all of us miserable. You could have had everything. All right, Laura, all right, that's enough. Now, look, you can protest all you want to. It's not going to change anything. It's my life, Laura. I'm the one who knows best what must be done with it. Now, if you don't want to wear that dress for something else, then I think you should just pack it up, put it away in the box, and take it 